In this video, we're going to look at compounding interest, uh, you know, quarterly and uh, monthly in examples eight and nine here. Okay. This mean to compound semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, or weekly. We're going to start with this example. Invest a thousand dollars at an APR of six percent, compounded quarterly for four years. APR, by the way, means annual percentage rate. Okay. So write that down. Annual percentage rate. The annual rate. So if the annual rate is 6%, but we want it compounded quarterly, what does that mean? Well, it means we're getting a little bit greedier. This example 5, okay, was uh, investing a thousand dollars at six percent compound interest for four years that's just annual compound interest in example five at the end of the year at the end of year one we calculated the interest and we added it on so we have a thousand and sixty at the end of year two we get six percent of a thousand and sixty and we add that interest on okay at the end of year three we get six percent of this number this balance and here's the interest and we add it on so we're calculating interest and adding it on to the balance at the end of every year but what if we got just a little bit greedier and said hey hold on a second I want you to do this procedure at the end of every quarter now quarter of a year there's 12 months in a year so a quarter of a year is three months right so every three months now we want them to do this so what would be the procedure because they can't give us six percent every three months surely that wouldn't make sense right can't give us six percent every three months quarterly but they could do s something so the bank could say okay you're getting a little bit greedy okay we understand that for sure so we're, we'll compound your account uh, quarterly so but what we're going to do is we're going to take the six percent we're going to count we're going to come up with a a special interest rate and this special interest rate is is going to be called the quarterly write this down quarterly interest rate and this quarterly interest rate is going to be and now we know there's four quarters in a year there's three months six months nine months and twelve months right every three months that's a quarter right so the quarterly interest rate is going to be the six percent divided by four so we're going to take that regular annual percentage rate at six percent we'll just divide it by four and see what that gives okay so six divided by four plug it in your calculator 1.5 percent right so they'll say okay you're getting a little bit greedy that's fine we'll give you 1.5 percent interest added on to your balance every quarter right and so that means that and that the idea is that you know when you get interest added on we notice that you can you can get interest on top of interest so to speak so the sooner you get interest added on the, the sooner you can get more interest on that interest so to speak okay so we'll just have a look and see what this means so we have a special quarterly interest rate which is 1.5 percent please write that as a decimal also 0. Point what? zero point zero one five isn't it or you could just do one point five over a hundred just to make sure say zero point zero one five okay and we're going to look at the number of quarters and see what happens in this account well, I guess we'll do the interest earned and then the balance so we'll look at what happens at the end of quarter one and then we'll have a look at the interest earned so at the end of quarter one which is three months by the way already need to make some space over here sorry let me just get it under start this again so at the end of quarter one which is three months 
we're going to calculate interest. We're going to use the special quarterly interest rate of 0.015. So we're going to get 1.5% basically. Not 6%, but 1.5% of the balance of the the money. What we start the principal, what we start with, right? So 1.5% of that, we're going to calculate that and add it on. Right, so the interest, 1.5% of that would be 0 0.015 time, times 1,000. What does that give? Well, that would be $15, wouldn't it? So, um, the balance now would be what? Well, we start with principal of a thousand. We have fifteen dollars interest after three months. So great, we get now a thousand and fifteen. So the sooner we add interest onto the balance, the sooner we can start earning interest on top of interest. So now, at in month four and five and six, we're going to start earning interest on top of the fifteen dollars. So after quarter. On quarter two, six months later, right? Quarter number two, we're again going to get the interest earned, 1.5% of whatever's there, 1015, okay? So 0 0.015 times 1015, calculate that. And that's 15.225. And now we add this onto this, okay? So we add, this is the balance, this is the new interest at the end of quarter two, so we can add that interest on right away. And that gives us a balance of 1030.225. Or you could round that, well you need to round that to, and round this one. This one will be rounded to fifteen dollars and twenty what? The next number is a five, so do we round up or down? We round up to twenty three, okay? And this one would be approximately one thousand and thirty dollars and twenty three cent again. Right? So after nine months which is three quarters of a year, sorry, three quarters uh, calculate the interest and the balance and then please do the same for 12 months or one year right so press pause and do the interest and the balance for each of these okay I hope you press pause and go do it now so we've got to get 1.5% of this number 1030.23 and so that is going to be 0 0.015 times 1030.23 okay or to make it even more accurate um you could you could keep the 225 really you know so 0 0.015 or I'll just clear this 0 0.015 times um one zero three zero point two two five press enter and fifteen point four five three three uh so approximately fifteen dollars and what forty five cents right and then we add that on to the balance Add that to the 1030.225 and we get the balance of, sorry this is the balance, should be here, 1045.68, okay, and after four months it's 1.5 percent or 0 0.015 times this number 
And so if that's in my calculator, actually, why don't I just do times 0 0.015, enter, and I'll get what the interest should be there. So in any case, it was that times 1045.6 uh, Seven, eight, three, and so on. So the point is, when you're doing these financial calculations, you want to use lots of decimal, po uh, lots of digits after the decimal point, lots of digits, just to make sure you don't make a, a rounding error. Because if you round while you're calculating, then the answer might be uh, a little rounded a bit too much. It might be a little bit off. So in any case, that should be fifteen, uh, fifteen point six eight five one something like that so approximately 1569 and then add that on to the balance 1045 point and I'm going to use the um, 678 uh, so does that work yeah so this would be approximately 1061.36 Okay, so I guess if you're off by a cent, not a big deal. But but uh, you know, try to use lots of uh, decimal points when you're calculating things, and then round the very last answer. That's that's okay. And um, you know, like I said with the calculator, you know, try try to use numbers that are already in there by you know pressing multiply by the answer and stuff. So anyway, so um, that's what we've got at the end of 12 months or one year. So we're getting a little bit greedy. Now how does this compare? Have we actually made much more money than if we just compounded annually? Go back to example five and take a look. Example five, we invested a thousand dollars at six percent compounded annually, annual compound interest, right? So after the first year we had one thousand and sixty dollars. When we compound quarterly, we have after three months, six months, after 12 months, four quarters, we have $1,061.36. So by compounding quarterly, sure, that sure enough, you do make a little bit more money. How much more money did we make than compounding annually? Compounding annually was 1060 Whereas compounding quarterly gives us $1,061.36. So we made $1.36 more than if we had it compounded just at the end of the year. So we made a little bit. I guess it was worth it, right? So in any case, um, what happens though if we keep going for four years? Uh, these are quarters. So we're getting 1.5% added on every quarter. And before we go any further, I'd like to sh like you to come up with a formula for all this so we don't have to keep calculating the interest. Although it's a, it's just it's grand that we did it once, but let's have a formula now for this, okay? So here we were the the balance here we uh, the interest rate is 1.5%, right? What was that compound interest formula we used? Do you remember? So basically, we're starting with a thousand dollars, and we're multiplying it by one. So we keep the thousand plus one point five percent, or zero point zero one five, right? So after one year, isn't that the amount we have? Multiply that out. That's going to be a thousand fifteen, right? After two years, or not two years? I mean two periods, two quarters, the. After one quarter, we have this. After two quarters, it's going to be 1,000, the principal, times 1 plus 0 0.015 to get the interest for the first year. And then we're going to times it by that again for the second uh, uh, quarter, not year, quarter, for the second quarter, right? And of course, this is 1,000 times 1 plus. 0 0.015 all squared because it's this this time the same thing times itself twice. So let us calculate this and see if it becomes one thousand and thirty dollars and twenty three cents. 
And of course, this is an easier way than, than doing the interest and then adding it on, on again, right? And it's more accurate. It'll make sure you don't make a mistake if you use the formula, right? So 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.015 to the power of 2, right? Press enter. And 1030.225, which rounds to 1030. Point two three. Okay, so this should you should be able to see that this is the same thing, right? Now, um, after three quarters, quarters, not years, after three quarters, what is the balance going to be using a formula here? It's going to be one thousand times one plus zero point zero one five to the power of. 3. So quickly check this to make sure this is the same as this. Right? 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.015 to the power of 3. Ah. 1.015 power of 3. So sure, yes indeed, that should give you 1045.6 eight if you round up okay so this is the formula the only difference is we're not dealing in years we're dealing in quarters because the interest is compounded quarterly okay so the the only new thing you're really learning is that you must when you're given an annual percentage rate you've got to change that to a quarterly rate okay if it's quarterly or if it's monthly we're going to come up with a monthly rate we'll see that in the next example and then we use that to calculate everything so my question to you is can you find the balance don't worry about this interest column but can you find the balance after two years under this scheme and my first the first thing you got to write down is how many quarters is two years? How many quarters are in one year? Four, right? So how many quarters are going to be in two years? In two years that's going to be eight quarters, right? And I hope we're, we've seen the pattern that if we have two quarters it's this thing squared, if you have three quarters it's this thing cubed so if we have eight quarters, what's the formula going to be? One thousand times one point or one plus same thing zero one five to the power of eight. Does that make sense? And plug that in your calculator. And of course, if you have a um. Up, 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 up. If you have a cheap or a not a fancy calculator, you can do the 1.015 and then find an exponent key somewhere and make do that to the power of 8. Press enter, okay, and you get 1.1264 and so on. And then type multiply, so you multiply that by 1000 and then hit enter or equals or whatever. But we should be able to get that to be approximately 1126.49 okay what is the interest earned after two years under this scheme compounding quarterly now the principal was what invested a thousand the principal was a thousand after two years we have one thousand one hundred twenty six dollars forty nine cents so the interest has to be the one hundred and twenty six dollars and forty nine cents that makes sense that's the interest right so what I want you to do is figure out how much would be in this account after three years and then after four years if it's interest compounded quarterly okay so most just get the balance after three years So press pause and try that. Okay, I'm going to do it now.
So the important thing to note is three years is how many quarters? Four quarters in one year, so three years has to be 12 quarters. And we must use the quarterly interest rate that we calculated. We took 6% and divided it by 4. 1.5% added on every four, uh, every quarter, because it's four in a year, right? And so we take our principal. We multiply it by 1 plus the rate, 1.015 and then put it to the power of 12 compoundings. It's going to be compounded 12 times at the end of every quarter. Three years is 12 quarters. At the end of every quarter, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and then 15 months, and 18 months, and 21 months, and 24 months, it's going to be compounded. So there's going to be interest calculated and added on 12 times by the, time, by the end of year three. Okay, does that make sense? So then just plug that in your calculator somehow. I'm just going to use this Casio one for fun this time. I'm going to go 1.015. I'm going to use the, oops, sorry, the um, x to the power of y key to put that to the power of 12. I'm going to press equals, and uh, my battery's running out. And then I just multiply that by 1,000. And press equals. Okay. So in any case, um, when you calculate that, you should get one one nine five point six one eight. So round that to six two approximately. Okay. And what was the interest after three years then? If the principal was a thousand, what's the interest? after 12 quarters, did I say 12 years again? 12 quarters, we get $195.62. Okay, so calculate it for three years, what do you get after, th or sorry, calculate this for four years, what do you get after four years? Hope you tried it, hope you press pause and try it for four years, I'm going to do it now. Four years is 16 quarters, so we take our principal. We multiply it by 1.015, put it to the power of 16, 16 compoundings. And here we go, 1,000 times 1.015 to the power of 16, press enter, and we should get 1268.985, is what you might should have, 985, and then you round that up to get 0.99, okay? And the interest is, we started with $1,000, so the interest is whatever is over 1000 and that is $268.99, okay? So we're just gonna quickly look at these numbers and compare them to what happens when we just compounded annually. So I want you to just flip back to example five where we invested a thousand dollars at six percent annual compound interest for four years. After four years in example five, where we only had four compoundings, and look at the formula, look how different it is, okay? Where we had this was this was example five annual compound interest, okay? A thousand dollars times one plus the six percent compounded four times at the end of every year, okay? And what we had was one thousand two hundred and sixty two dollars and forty eight cents okay but when we did this compounded every quarter the first thing that had to change was well we can't give you six percent every quarter well we'll give you one and a half percent every quarter right and then there's going to be sixteen compoundings because of sixteen quarters in four years and um, at the end of all that you will have one thousand two hundred sixty-eight dollars and ninety-nine cents. So that's is how do these numbers compare? This and this. Look at this number and this number. How do they compare? Which is bigger? Compounding annually or compounding quarterly? Which is better? Compounding quarterly is better. A little bit better, isn't it? Looks to me a little bit more than six dollars more. Sixty-two, sixty-eight. See that? About six dollars more. So it's not a big deal. So you have to be a little bit uh, 
a little bit uh, greedy to, to be so concerned about compounding quarterly or annually. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, really, does it? Especially, unless you have a, a whole ton of money, I suppose it would, would matter then. Anyway, but if we go on to example 9, we're going to invest $1,000 at an APR of 6% compounded monthly for four years. So, how are we going to do this? Write down what APR means, first of all. If you write it down, it'll get put into your long-term memory, and that's where you want it. Long-term memory will help you with your tests and everything else. So, we're going to write down APR is annual percentage rate. Okay? And... Um, so, compounded monthly, hmm, what that means is that every month we're going to calculate interest and add it on. So we're getting a little bit, even a little bit more greedy than compounding quarterly. We want, we want, uh, we want this interest machine to, to be working even more. We want interest added on every month. Now the annual percentage rate is 6%. Now the bank isn't going to say, hey, we'll give you 6% every month. That would be crazy. Your your money would fly up really fast, right? But they'll say, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We'll take your 6% APR, whatever it is. We'll take your annual percentage rate and we'll divide it by the number of compoundings, whatever that number is, right? And um, so the APR is 6%. The number of compoundings per year is 12, right? 12 months in a year. And that is the percentage we will of interest we will give you at the end of every month. And we'll add it onto your balance. And so you'll get some interest uh, added onto your account every month. So what does this make? 6% divided by 12. It makes 0. Point what percent? 6 over 12 is 0. 0.5, right? 0. 0.5 percent. What's that as a decimal? It is 0. 0.005, right? 0.5% is in fact 0.5 divided by 100. That's what 0.5% is, right? So, um, this is our monthly interest rate, okay? This is our monthly interest rate, 0 0.005. And once you have that, I mean, the rest of this um, is the same as kind of like annual compounding. It's just, it's just that there's more compounding. So you just got to watch out and you just got to think about it. So we'll just, just really quickly do, do, do a few of these. Um, I'm not even going to do the interest comp calculation. I'll just do the month. So we'll do the first month, right? And then we'll see what's in the balance and we'll just use the formula, right? So the point is after the first month the bank will give you 0.5% right? So I'll give you the thousand dollars of course, right? At the end of the first month plus 0.5% of the thousand, right? So that's a thousand plus 0 0.005 times a thousand, which will make um, a thousand plus five dollars, right? So at the end of the first month, the bank will give you a thousand and five dollars, right? And of course, we can also write this as, and again, if you pull out the greatest common factor on this guy, you got your thousand dollars here, you got your thousand dollars here. If you pull him out, that's a thousand 
times 1 plus 0 0.005, okay? So this is the formula, 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.005, right? At the end of month 1, which gives you $1,005. So at the end of month 2, what will the um, balance be? Well, you, you got to take your principal 1,000 and multiply it by what? 1 plus 0 0.005, right? And that will compound it once, but we multiply it by it again to compound it a second time, right? Okay, and the formula then becomes 1000 times 1.005 to the power of 2, basically, right? I just added these together, sorry about that. And you can put that in your calculator and see what that gives you. one point zero zero five to the power of two and one oh one oh point zero two five or approximately one oh one oh to the nearest cent point zero three I guess right so that's the end of month two what about month three and then what about what happens after one year is what I need to know. So in any case, first of all do month three. Press pause and give yourself more time if you need it. And then I'll do it. Okay, the end of month three, we're going to take our principal. We're going to compound it three times. So multiply by this to the power of three. Okay, And that gives us one oh one five point zero seven five uh etc which is approximately to the nearest cent one oh one five point zero eight round it up right after one year how many months is one year many months is one year one year is 12 months. So after one year there will be 12 compoundings. This interest will be calculated and added on 12 times. Okay? Not just every, not just one time for the year, and not just four times for four quarters, but 12 times for 12 months. So we'll get a thousand dollars principal. We'll take the special monthly interest rate that we calculated. This is the important part here. And we'll multiply it by 1.005 to the power of 12. Okay, so in your calculator. Oh, I'll try and use this one again. How am I going to get this to work? Oh well. Sorry, clear. Just use this one. Uh, 1000 times 1 1.005 to the power of 12. What does that give you? So 1061.677. So to the nearest cent, that is 1061.68. Right? So that's after one year. Now let's pause there for a minute. Take this number that we've just got after one year and compare it to compounding quarterly and compounding annually. So we'll just go back to the example 8 and see what happened when we compounded quarterly. Quarterly compounding after one year, that was four quarters, we have $1,061.36, right? And compounding uh, monthly, which is what we're doing here, compounding monthly, we have $1,061.68. So which is more and which is better? Quarterly or monthly? Monthly gave us a little bit more, didn't it? Just a few more cents. I mean, you're talking, if you subtract it, that's actually 32 cents more. 
So for just a little bit extra greedy, we say, hey, no, no, credit union, we want you to calculate the interest once a month and add it on instead of once a quarter. So going from monthly, if you were at quarterly and then you change to monthly calculations, your amount after the year would be up by 32 cents. Okay. So if 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 you invested a thousand dollars. So in any case, what about how does this monthly business compounding monthly compare to annual compounded interest? Well, annual compounded interest was example five, and we invested. Look, they're the same. We invested a thousand at six percent annual compounded interest for four years. So um, after one year in example five, we were at a balance of one thousand and sixty. So compounding monthly, of course, is more than that little bit, isn't it? A dollar sixty-eight more. So compounded monthly gives us a dollar sixty-eight more. So the thing about compounded monthly, for example, is well, yeah, you get you get uh, twelve times the interest is added on, but I mean, the monthly interest rate, of course, is six percent divided by twelve, so it's only half a percent every month. So, you know, that's why you only get a dollar sixty eight more than compounded annually. I mean it's 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 a little bit better but it's not that big of a deal. So could you calculate what this would be after um four years? What would be the amount in the account after four years? Compounded monthly. So we're gonna invest thousand dollars at an APR of six percent compounded monthly for four years and and I, I want you now to do do it go ahead and calculate the four years how many months is in four years anyway that's in that's important isn't it so press pause and try that okay I hope you've pressed pause and tried it I'll do it now. Four years is in fact 48 months. And if we're compounding monthly, that's 48 compoundings of this special monthly interest rate. So let's take the principal, multiply by 1.005. 48 times we do that. 48 compoundings. Plug this in the calculator, see what you get. 1000 times. Uh, 1.015 to the power of 48, press enter, and we get 2043. Isn't that interesting? Did I do that right? No, I didn't. I did that wrong. Sorry, my mistake. 1000 times 1.005 to the power of 48, press enter, 1270.489. 1270.489. Four eight nine blah blah blah, which is approximately to the nearest cent, one thousand two hundred seventy dollars and forty nine cent.